So it was 18th November 2022. I had the most incredible experience of my life. I was in a small island called Sriharikota, which is the spaceport of India. And I was right at its mission control center as the mission director for India's first private rocket mission. And the rocket you see here is built with a very small team by a very small startup called Skyroot Aerospace based in Hyderabad. And rockets are the most complicated machines built by humans. And in fact, most of the first attempts at rocket launches fail in world history. And then uh, I, was gay, I was there at the mission control center getting more and more nervous as we approached the launch slot. Because in fact, the blood, sweat and tears for years have gone into it. And a very small team with a median age of just 28 years built this rocket, assembled it and took it to the launch pad. As the launch slot is approaching, I was getting more and more nervous because as a rocket engineer, I know that rockets can fail with the smallest things. I know that zillion things can go wrong in a rocket launch. I've seen rockets exploding at the launch pad. I've seen even the smallest components failing and causing a rocket launch, losing balance, and even the smallest electric wire snapping can cause a rocket launch failure. And knowing all that, my nervousness is growing and growing, and within no time, the launch countdown starts. And let's all experience the launch countdown straight from Mission Control Center at Sri Arikota. Well, that was the stupendous success of India's first private rocket launch for you, right in the very first attempt. And in fact, it was hailed as one of the biggest events in India's space history, especially from the private sector point of view. And it was hailed as a historic moment for India and a proud moment from India by our Honorable President, our Honorable Prime Minister. In fact, Prime Minister Modi has spent three minutes in his monkey bath talking about the launch and said that this launch proves that sky is no limit for youth in the country. And also he said, sky is also no limit for startups in the country and this launch has proved it. And then the international media called this rocket launch thrusting India's ambition to space exploration race. In fact, very, very few countries in the world had a rocket launch by a private sector. That puts us in a light group of countries which where a private company is able to build and launch a rocket to space. And after this great event, we had celebrations starting right at the Mission Control Center. The photo at the left, you see Dr. Jitendra Singh, our Union Minister for Science and Technology and for Space at the Mission Control, enjoying the moment after the launch along with Chair Minister Dr. Somnath. And the right top, you can see our incredible team, very young team, which made it happen, elated by the wonderful launch achievement which they have done on that particular day. And we also have our beloved Minister KTR Garu joining us for the launch success bash event once we return back to Hyderabad. I think it's a momentous journey we had and naturally we were also on the magazine covers and appreciation pouring in for weeks and weeks from politicians, celebrities, newspapers, social media, and very importantly, our parents, our relatives and friends. And our, the spirit of a young team is at its all-time high. It inspired us to do more and more with time. And then this journey is more like a fairy tale. And even today, just imagining the launch gives me goosebumps. So let's look at, let's rewind four years from the launch date in 2018. Let's look at the beginning of the story. In 2018, I was just about to complete six years at my dream job as a scientist at the Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO. I was so proud as of being a part of the ISRO journey, being part of the space program. I know, I was, I know that ISRO is the top five space agencies in the world, and I was very proud of it. And in fact, the most cost efficient in the world. 
And in fact, you all have seen this as proved by the recent success of Chandrayaan-3 launch. ISRO made India the first country in the world to successfully land a spacecraft closer to the South Pole. <laughs> and more importantly, this launch proved the technological prowess of India and also was done at a fraction of cost compared to anybody else in the world. And in fact, the mission cost was less than the budget of Hollywood movies, Interstellar and Gravity. And that's the kind of efficiency we have in India. I was very proud, naturally, as a research scientist to be part of the space program. But one day, after learning, you know, after being six years in the industry, after learning more about the space industry, I realized that India needs private enterprise, more and more private companies coming up, competing on a global scale, and widening our $400 billion world space market, widening our share in it. And I strongly felt that India needs it. And I thought, why not I build it? Why not I build a team which can make it happen? And I went, when I looked out and saw what is the environment which can make it happen, I realized there is no policy. So there is no policy for launching rockets in India by the private sector in 2018. And but you need huge amount of capital to make it happen. And there was no funding environment at that time. There was no fund in India which has a thesis to invest in space technology companies. And there is no talent in the private sector at that point of time because it's totally new. And you need phenomenal talent to build this extremely deep technology. And then a lot of, comp not of forget about com companies, even a lot of countries in the world could not build their rocket program successfully, showing that if not done properly, it could take even decades to build this. And looking at it, every odd is against the success of such a venture. But something in the gut told that this is something which needs to be done. And there was a raw confidence that I could build a team which could do it. And with that, without anything, with just a leap of faith, I took the decision to quit my most favorite job and start Skyroot Aerospace in 2018, along with my friend and co-founder Bharat, who was my colleague at ISRO. And then we started in 2018, and I never thought that we'd raise funds even for years. And just within a few weeks, we raised 10 crores in capital from very influential investor and entrepreneur who came and helped us in the journey. So we started attracting the best people towards us, towards this mission. And as we, with that capital, you know, we started building rocket engine parts, we started doing the design, we started progressing further, and then one year passed, and then two years passed, and then the money started depleting, and we didn't have much capital to survive. And then there was no clue about the policy. We didn't know whether the policy is going to come or not, and it was a very, very tough time in our journey. And when such, in such a situation, suddenly COVID hit the world. And I think everything came to a standstill, as we all know, for months and months. In fact, we are a hardware startup. We need movement. We need people to move. We need hardware to move to make it happen. And everything is at a standstill for months together. And this was the lowest moment in our journey. It was so low. And it was probably, you know, a crisis moment for us. But still, we stuck together. We persisted and persisted and progressed with the minimum resources we had. And then one fine day, a big announcement came. The sector is opened up to the private sector. And the new space reforms have been announced. And a very efficient organization to build the private space sector to the next orbit has been formed. And in fact, we became the first beneficiary of it by signing the first ever MOU with this row. And this MOU helps us access cutting edge launch facilities, test facilities. In fact, the launch you have seen is done at ISRO's facilities at Sri Harukota. And then most people said that, you know, you could raise a few rounds of capital, but it's very difficult to raise a very large growth capital which is required to scale a very capital intensive company like a rocket company. And then we broke the, gas, the glass ceiling and made uh, the first largest ever fundraised round in the country. And then we, just within two years, were able to accumulate funds of over 500 crores, starting with zero. I never imagined that probably it would take uh, several years to even raise that capital. <laughs> and I never imagined that policy is going to come even in five years, 10 years. It just happened in two years of starting Skyroot. And then starting with just two people in 2018, we scaled to a phenomenal team of 200 and 80 wonderful people across the country coming and working on this wonderful mission. 
And this wonderful team is what makes magic happen like the launch you have seen before. And then we created history by launching India's first private rocket launch in record time, successful in the very first attempt. And also appreciation and recognition started pouring in. We were recognized with two national awards, two state awards. This year, CNBC conferred us with the startup of the year and we won Forbes Leadership Award etc and etc and this all inspired us to do more and more and this journey shows that you know if we could do from nothing build and launch a rocket despite several challenges within a short period of time it shows that nothing is impossible if you take that first bold step to start and persist until you reach your goal and then I think uh, we have launched rockets, we have got the funding, we got the policy. So what next? And what the future holds? So next is we are building a seven story tall rocket called Vikram 1, which is in the final leg of manufacturing, which will be launched in the coming months. And then with time, we will be doing more and more launches. And one day imagine a time where booking a rocket becomes as easy as booking a cab. And then we're going to scale to bigger rockets, which can launch humans and cargo to space. And then let's ask one very important question. Why even build rockets? When there's so many problems on Earth, why should we even build rockets? In fact, rockets are the only machines which can launch something to space. And these satellites which are launched to space give us GPS to navigate. It gives us direct to home television. It helps us surveillance at the borders. It helps fishermen identify the right shoals of fish and, and avoid a lot of fuel usage and also helps him go to the target without, with very less time. It connects 90% of the Earth's surface. A lot of ATMs are connected with satellites. And then the list goes on and on. Today, we cannot live without space services. And this is just the beginning. And then what does the future hold in the future? And, and as we see in the next 10 to 20 years, as tens of thousands of satellites will be launched to space and 50% of the world's population will get very high speed, low cost internet enabled by space. And with more and more time, the data becomes so low cost. In fact, the rockets and satellites become so cheap that a farmer in his smartphone can check the health of its crop. That, and, and if you can create a future where every student can build and launch a satellite to space before they graduate. And most of you would love to have a tour in space. Space tourism will become a reality. And also, with, as, as after 10, 20 years, I think there will come a day where we can break the chain of gravity and start exploring the universe. In fact, today, we are only accessing Earth's resources, but the solar system has resources to sustain trillions and trillions of human beings by using energy and resources of the solar system. And that day is not far and that is a very exciting future way ahead of that. And all this is built with cutting edge rockets, better rockets, more and more rockets going to space. And space is going to transform our lives like nothing ever before. And we'll also see a future where people living in other planets, utilizing the resources in other planets and becoming a self-sustainable civilization going forward. And then I would like to ask all of you one very important question. Do you all know how much time does it take to go to space? Anybody? One day. So it just takes 10 minutes to go to space. While every day it takes me 45 minutes to go from my home to my office, which is just seven kilometers away. And space is super close just 10 minutes away and it's our it's our aim to make it open to everybody thank you